made a mistake and went after my boss. When my husband found out, he did this. Hey, Reddit, longtime user of this app, but I've never really posted anything personal on here. I think my story is worth sharing. I cheated on my husband, and the moment my husband found out, he hid the fact that he knew and then brought another woman to our celebration party. And that is why I've decided to make this post. My name is Emily, and I'm a 33-year-old woman. I've been married to my husband, Alex, who is a 35-year-old man for about six years. Alex and I met in college, and we instantly hit it off. Our first date was magical in a way. Alex had planned everything meticulously, from the cozy Italian restaurant with dim lighting to the bouquet of flowers he brought. I remember feeling a flutter of excitement when he approached me, a charming smile on his face. We talked for hours about everything and nothing. He was a great listener, and he made me feel like my thoughts truly mattered. There was a moment when our eyes met, and I felt a connection that I had never experienced before. After dinner, we took a stroll in the park. The night was cool and the stars shone brightly above us. Alex took my hand and we walked in comfortable silence, enjoying each other's company. He then walked me home. He asked if he could see me again. I said yes without hesitation, knowing deep down that this was probably the start of something special. Yep. For our second date, Alex surprised me with tickets to a live music event. It was an artist I had mentioned liking in passing and he remembered. That thoughtful gesture won me over even more. The concert was amazing and we danced the night away. Alex's sense of humor shone through as we joked and laughed together. I felt like I could be myself around him, which was a refreshing change. After the concert, we went for a late night snack at a charming cafe. The conversation flowed effortlessly and I found myself opening up to Alex in ways I hadn't with anyone else. After the night ended, Alex walked me to my door and asked if he could kiss me goodnight. It was a perfect end to a perfect evening. On our third date, Alex took me on a picnic in the park. It was a beautiful sunny day, and he had prepared a basket filled with delicious food and wine. We found a quiet spot under a tree and spread out a blanket. We enjoyed our meal, and we talked about our dreams and aspirations. Alex shared his passion for his work and his plans for the future. I was impressed by his ambition and drive. After lunch, we went for a walk around the park. We laughed and joked, enjoying each other's company. It felt like we had known each other for years, not just a few weeks. As the sun began to set, Alex took my hand and led me to a secluded spot overlooking a pond. He wrapped his arms around me and we watched the sun disappear below the horizon. It was a perfect day, and I knew then that I had fallen for Alex. For our fourth date, Alex planned a day trip to a nearby town known for its scenic views and charming cafes. It was a spontaneous and adventurous choice that I found exciting. We started the day with a scenic drive, chatting and enjoying each other's company. When we arrived, Alex suggested we explore the town on foot. We wandered through the cobblestone streets, stopping to admire the architecture and browse in the quaint shops. For lunch, we found a cozy cafe and sat outside, savoring the local cuisine. The conversation flowed easily, and I felt a deep connection with Alex. After lunch, we decided to hike up to a nearby viewpoint. The hike was invigorating, and the view from the top was breathtaking. We sat on a bench, catching our breath and taking in the beauty around us. After the night ended, we started heading back to the car, tired but happy. For our fifth date, Alex planned a romantic evening at a rooftop restaurant overlooking the city skyline. I was excited about the date. The view was breathtaking. As we stepped out onto the rooftop of the restaurant, I couldn't help but feel a rush of excitement. The view was breathtaking, with the city skyline stretching out before us, bathed in the warm hues of the setting sun. Alex had planned the perfect evening, and I was looking forward to spending more time with him. We toasted to our growing relationship, the clink of our glasses blending with the soft music playing in the background. The ambiance was magical, and I felt a deep connection with Alex as we sat there, enjoying each other's company. During dinner, Alex surprised me with tickets to a show I'd been wanting to see. His thoughtfulness touched me, and I couldn't wait to experience the show with him by my side. After dinner, we took a leisurely stroll through the city, hand in hand. We talked about our hopes and dreams for the future, and I felt grateful to have found someone as caring and understanding as Alex. We made our way back to the car, and I felt a sense of contentment and happiness wash over me. I knew at that moment that I was falling in love with Alex, and I couldn't wait to see where our relationship would take us. Alex was incredibly driven and ambitious, even while still in school. 
He was freelancing and involved in many projects, which only added to his charm. It was clear he had a bright future ahead of him, and I admired his dedication. One evening after we had dinner together, Alex brought up the idea of us moving in together. He expressed how much he enjoyed our time together and how he saw a future with me. I was thrilled by the idea and agreed wholeheartedly. Moving in with Alex felt like the next natural step for us. We spent weeks packing up my things and getting our new place ready. Moving in together was an exciting yet challenging step for Alex and me. We were both used to having our own space and routines, so merging our lives into one household took some adjustment. One of the biggest struggles we faced was merging our belongings. We both had accumulated a lot of stuff over the years, and trying to find space for everything in our new place was a challenge. We had to decide what to keep, what to donate, and what to throw away, which led to some disagreements and compromises. Another struggle was dividing household responsibilities. We both had busy schedules, so finding time to clean, cook, and run errands was difficult. We had to sit down and come up with a schedule that worked for both of us, which required a lot of communication and compromise. Despite the struggles, moving in together ultimately brought us closer. We learned to compromise, communicate better, and appreciate each other's strengths and weaknesses. It was a learning experience, but one that strengthened our relationship in the end. Alex then graduated and embarked on his professional journey. I was still working towards completing my degree. His graduation ceremony was a proud moment for both of us, but it also marked the beginning of a new chapter in our lives. Alex, being two years ahead of me, had a head start in the job market. He landed an amazing job right after graduation, which was a testament to his hard work and dedication. Of course, I was thrilled for him and proud of his accomplishments. As an artist, my path was a bit different. I was passionate about my work and hoped that one of my paintings would help me break into the art world. I spent hours in my studio, pouring my heart and soul into my art, hoping that someday it would pay off. Despite our different career paths, Alex was always supportive of my dreams. He encouraged me to keep pursuing my passion and never gave up on my dreams. His unwavering support meant the world to me and gave me the strength to keep going, even when things got tough. Months passed after my graduation and I found myself grappling with the harsh reality of the art world. Despite all my efforts to promote my work through social media and other channels, I hadn't yet achieved the breakthrough I had hoped for. It was a very difficult time for me, and I had to watch as Alex shouldered the financial responsibilities while I struggled to make ends meet with my art. Alex, being the supportive boyfriend he was, gently suggested that I consider getting a part-time job or exploring opportunities in the art field to supplement our income. He wanted to ease the burden on me and ensure that I stayed active and engaged while pursuing my passion. However, I couldn't bring myself to accept his suggestion. I felt that taking a part-time job would be beneath me and a compromise on my artistic integrity. I was still holding out hope for my big break, believing that it was just around the corner. Despite Alex's encouragement and support, I couldn't shake off the feeling of disappointment and frustration. I was determined to prove myself as an artist and refused to give up on my dreams. I remember the day vividly, the day Alex proposed. It was a beautiful spring afternoon, and we had decided to take a stroll in the park near our apartment. As we walked hand in hand, enjoying the sunshine and the gentle breeze, Alex suddenly stopped and turned to me, a nervous but determined look in his eyes. He began to speak, his words filled with love and sincerity, expressing his deep feelings for me and his vision of our future together. And then he got down on one knee and pulled out a small box from his pocket. My heart skipped a beat as he opened the box to reveal a stunning ring, sparkling in the sunlight. He asked me to marry him, and in that moment I was overcome with emotion. Tears welled up in my eyes as I nodded eagerly, unable to find the words to express my joy and love for him. Alex slipped the ring onto my finger and we embraced, knowing that our lives were about to change forever. It was a magical moment, one that I will always cherish. Planning our wedding was both exciting and stressful. We wanted everything to be perfect, from the venue to the decorations to the guest list. But as the days turned into weeks and then months, the stress began to mount. There were so many decisions to make, so many details to consider. We had to find the perfect venue, choose a caterer, select the music, and pick out the perfect dress. And then there were the inevitable disagreements and compromises that come with planning a wedding. Despite the stress, we tried to enjoy the process and keep sight of the reason why we were doing all of this which was for us. On our wedding day, everything seemed to fall into place perfectly. The sun was shining, 
the sky was clear, and there was this feeling of joy and excitement in the air. I remember getting ready with my bridesmaids, the anticipation building with each passing minute. When I finally walked down the aisle and saw Alex waiting for me at the altar, I felt this rush of emotions, happiness, love, and gratitude. The ceremony was beautiful and heartfelt, filled with laughter and tears. As we exchanged vows and rings, I knew that I was marrying the love of my life, my soulmate. After the ceremony, we celebrated with our family and friends, dancing and laughing late into the night. It was a day I will never forget, a day filled with love, laughter, and joy. On our honeymoon, Alex had planned everything down to the last detail. We traveled to a beautiful tropical island, where we then spent our days lounging on the beach, exploring the local culture, and enjoying each other's company. Everything had been paid for by Alex, including our wedding, as I was still struggling to get my big break in the art world. Despite my lack of financial contribution, Alex never complained. He was supportive and understanding, and he was earning very well and also had good savings, so my financial situation didn't seem to bother him. It was during our honeymoon that I truly appreciated how lucky I was to have him as my partner. He was patient, caring, and always put my needs before his own. I knew then that I had married not only a loving husband, but also a true partner for life well until I betrayed him. As the years passed, my struggle to break into the art world persisted. Despite Alex's gentle suggestions to find a job or pursue other avenues, I stubbornly clung to the hope that my big break was just around the corner. Instead of taking his advice, I found myself becoming increasingly lazy, spending my days at home doing nothing productive. I refused to consider a job, feeling that anything less than a successful career in art would be beneath me. To make matters worse, I started neglecting my health, leading to weight gain. Alex, ever patient and understanding, never once complained. He continued to support me both emotionally and financially, never losing faith in my abilities or my dreams. As time went by, my situation with Alex worsened. About five years into our marriage, he reached his breaking point. I had let myself go, gained a considerable amount of weight, and became lazy and unmotivated. Alex, on the other hand, was still working hard and shouldering all the responsibilities at home, including the chores. We had initially planned to start a family in our 30s, but Alex no longer felt that I was ready for such a responsibility. He expressed his concerns about bringing a child into our current situation and told me that I needed to change before we could even consider having kids. Yes, sir. I tried to convince him to let me be a stay-at-home mom, but he refused, stating that it would only make me lazier. It was then that he gave me an ultimatum. Either I get a job or he would leave me. That ultimatum was a wake-up call for me. I knew I had to make a change if I wanted to save my marriage. I managed to secure a job at a local art gallery, hoping that it would be a step in the right direction. I started to feel incredibly insecure about my appearance. The weight I had gained made me feel unattractive and undesirable. I looked in the mirror and hardly recognized myself. It was a constant struggle, and the truth was losing weight was much harder than gaining it. I tried various diets and exercise routines, but nothing seemed to work. My self-esteem hit an all-time low, and I found myself avoiding social situations and even intimacy with Alex because of how I felt about my body. It was a difficult and lonely time for me, and I felt like I was losing myself more and more each day. Working at the art gallery was a breath of fresh air. The staff was friendly and welcoming, and I quickly made some fast friends among my coworkers. Despite enjoying my job, I couldn't shake off the resentment I felt towards Alex for forcing me to start working. I felt like he had taken away my freedom and independence. But then, there was James. James was the owner of the art gallery, and he was unlike anyone I had ever met. He was charming, charismatic, and incredibly kind. He made me feel beautiful and desirable, something I hadn't felt in a long time. James would flirt with me and shower me with compliments, and I found myself drawn to him in a way I couldn't explain. James was always so friendly and kind, but it felt like he was extra friendly towards me. He had a way of making me feel special, like I was the only one in the room. He would often bring me my favorite coffee in the morning or leave little notes on my desk, just to brighten my day. His gestures were small but thoughtful, and they always put a smile on my face. At first, I didn't think too much of it. I just liked the attention and the way he made me feel. But as time went on, I started to develop an attraction for him. I knew it was wrong, especially since I was married, but I couldn't help myself. James was just so charming and attentive, and I found myself drawn to him more and more each day. As time went on, my attraction to James grew stronger, 
He was always so charming and attentive, and I found myself looking forward to our interactions more and more. I could tell that he was also becoming more flirty with me, and I didn't mind it one bit. In fact, I liked it. <laughs> looking back now, I realized that I should have told my husband about how I was feeling. But back then, I was too caught up in the attention and the excitement of it all. I was also afraid that if my husband found out, he would make me quit my job, and I didn't want that. James made me feel good about myself, especially since I had such horrible insecurities. His attention and affection were like a balm to my wounded self-esteem, and I craved it more and more. I found myself drawn to James in a way I hadn't expected. Our conversations went beyond work, delving into personal anecdotes, shared interests, and mutual hobbies. James was charming and attentive, making me feel special and understood in a way that Alex, my husband, no longer did. We started chatting frequently, and I eagerly anticipated each message from James. I would often lose track of time, engrossed in our conversations late into the night. James seemed to have a knack for saying the right things, boosting my confidence and making me feel desirable. Despite knowing that my growing attraction to James was wrong, I couldn't help but enjoy the attention. I craved the excitement and validation that our interactions provided, especially as my marriage with Alex had lost much of its spark. Granted, I knew it was my fault for that, but still. I also knew I was treading dangerous waters, but the thrill of the forbidden kept pulling me back to James and made it difficult for me to resist his charm. James started inviting me to solo outings outside of work. He would suggest we go watch a movie I had mentioned wanting to see or go out for food at a cozy restaurant or even go for a walk in the park. These outings felt like mini adventures, a refreshing change from my daily routine. James was attentive and thoughtful, always making sure I was comfortable and enjoying myself. I found myself looking forward to these outings, eagerly anticipating the next time we would meet. It was exhilarating to spend time with someone who seemed genuinely interested in me and my well-being. These moments with James became a bright spot in my otherwise mundane life, and I found myself craving more of his company. I began to feel a growing resentment towards Alex, my husband. While I still loved him, I couldn't help but compare myself to him. His physique remained unchanged, while I had gained weight over the years, feeling less attractive and more insecure. It was hard not to notice the contrast, especially when James, who I was growing closer to, made me feel beautiful and desired. What frustrated me even more was Alex's apparent obliviousness to my struggles. I was battling with my mental health, feeling trapped in a cycle of self-doubt and insecurity. I longed for Alex to notice and offer support, but it seemed like he didn't see my pain. His lack of understanding drove a wedge between us, pushing me further towards James, who seemed to understand me in a way Alex didn't. Looking back now, I can see that Alex cared deeply, and he noticed when things started to change between us. He tried his best to make me happy, but I was too entranced by James's attention to notice. When Alex saw me getting more distant and glued to my phone, he tried to overcompensate by doing everything he could to reconnect with me. But I was already too far gone, blinded by James's charm and the excitement he brought into my life. It wasn't Alex who pushed me towards James. I pushed myself towards him, caught up in the fantasy he offered. Alex had always been there holding down the fort, but I was too wrapped up in my own desires to see it at the time. James soon started inviting me to his house, he was married and his wife was pregnant, but she was staying with her parents until the baby was born, or so he said. I began visiting him at his home innocently enough, watching movies, having lunch, or sometimes dinner. However, things took a turn, spilled over, and I ended up cheating on my husband. After the incident with James, I was horrified. I avoided him for days, but he persisted, trying to convince me that I wasn't at fault. Deep down, I needed reassurance that what I did was right, and both James and my own mind provided that reassurance. James blamed it on Alex, saying I wouldn't have cheated if Alex hadn't neglected me sexually. I started to believe it was Alex's fault. However, the truth was, whenever Alex tried to initiate sexual contact, I had always refused because I felt insecure. I was also angry about him forcing me to get a job, and soon he just stopped initiating. As much as I loved Alex, I found myself lying to him to continue my affair with James. It wasn't that I didn't love Alex anymore, but the attention and affection James showered on me made me feel alive in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I justified my actions by telling myself that I deserved this happiness, even if it meant betraying my marriage vows. 
I found myself constantly weaving lies to cover my tracks. Excuses would flow effortlessly from my lips, using work as a guise to slip away and meet James. Our encounters became more daring. Sometimes we would even wait until all our co-workers had left and then we would have sex. With each passing day, I felt myself drifting further from Alex. Alex handled most, if not all, the chores, but previously, I would assist as a way to bond with him, but now I refused to do anything. My phone became both my lifeline and my downfall. I was constantly clung to it. The life I once shared with Alex, filled with love and companionship, was now overshadowed by the guilt and shame of my actions. Despite my best efforts to hide my affair, the cracks in my facade were beginning to show, and I knew that it was only a matter of time before everything came crashing down. Alex then received a huge promotion at work, and when I found out, I couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. He had been working so hard, carrying the weight of our household on his shoulders, while I was lost in my affair with James. Seeing him succeed should have made me happy, but instead it filled me with shame. I knew that I was the reason why Alex had to work so hard, and why he had to take care of everything at home. While he was out there making a name for himself, I was chasing after James and his attention, neglecting the man who had always been there for me. Even though I felt guilty, I couldn't bring myself to end things with James. I was addicted to the attention and affection he gave me, even though I knew it was wrong. I tried to justify my actions by blaming Alex for neglecting me, but deep down I knew it was my fault. Alex's promotion brought a substantial increase in his earnings, nearly four times his previous salary. The significance of his achievement was not lost on me. It was a remarkable milestone in his career, a testament to his hard work and dedication. And despite my own personal struggles and guilt, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride for him. In celebration of his promotion, Alex suggested that we host a celebratory party to reconnect with our friends and family, many of whom we hadn't seen in quite some time. I agreed, eager to share in his success and enjoy a moment of happiness together. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to put aside our troubles and focus on the joyous occasion. Little did I know, the party would be a turning point in our relationship, one that would change everything and reveal the secret lie I had been living. As the party planning progressed, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off with Alex. He seemed more distant and cold, which was a stark contrast to his usual warm and affectionate self. Despite my own distance and the fact I was busy with my affair with James, Alex had always made an effort to bridge the gap between us. However, it was becoming increasingly clear that he was no longer trying as hard. I tried to brush off my concerns, attributing his behavior to stress or work-related issues. But deep down, I knew there was more to it. His actions spoke volumes, and I couldn't ignore the growing sense of unease that had settled in the pit of my stomach. I began to wonder if he had somehow found out about my affair, but I pushed those thoughts aside because I was unwilling to confront the truth. As the celebration party drew closer, Alex's behavior became even more perplexing. He bought an expensive car and began talking about purchasing a new house, which excited me, but also left me feeling surprised and somewhat saddened. Alex had a habit of buying everything in pairs, and he had been the one to purchase my current car. It was in his name, as he had paid it off and it was under his insurance. I brought up the idea of getting a new car, hoping to match his excitement for our future plans. But Alex brushed me off, asking what I did with my paychecks. While he covered all our bills, I didn't earn much, and what little I made was often spent on things I liked. Saving was a challenge, and I felt a pang of disappointment that he didn't see my desire for a new car as valid. As I was still struggling with Alex's increasingly cold demeanor, which was a huge contrast to his usual warmth, he surprised me further by withdrawing all his money from our joint account. I was shocked and confronted him about it, but he calmly explained that he had thought about it extensively and believed it would be better if we had separate accounts. He suggested we use the joint account solely for bills. I was taken aback by this sudden change, but I didn't protest. Doing so would have raised suspicion, and I was already dealing with feelings of confusion and unease about the state of our relationship. For the party, I made sure to invite all our friends and family. Alex even insisted I invite James and my co-workers. I obliged wanting to show off the life we had built together. I even took the time to shop for really good clothes, conscious of what people who hadn't seen me in a while would say when they saw how much weight I had gained. The night of the party, everything was going pleasantly fine, but Alex was running a bit late. I texted him and he said he assured me that he would be there soon. He said he had just gone to pick someone up, 
I was puzzled as no one had asked for a ride to our place. I texted him back and asked who, but he didn't reply back. When he finally arrived, I was shocked to see that he wasn't alone. He had brought another woman with him, and she was hanging on to him closely, like a leech. The woman was someone I knew from Alex's workplace. I had only met her a few times before, but I had always felt insecure about her, as she seemed to have a close relationship with Alex, and it was obvious she wanted him. I had told Alex to cut her off, and he did. He even told her he would like their relationship to only be professional, and she accepted. So seeing her at the party, looking beautiful and skinny, only intensified my feelings of insecurity. As I stood there watching Alex with the other woman, a mix of shock, embarrassment, and confusion washed over me. I couldn't believe he had brought her to our celebration party, especially when he knew how insecure I felt about her. We didn't invite her to the party, so why had Alex brought her? She was someone I knew from Alex's workplace, and she always seemed to be overly friendly with him, laughing at his jokes, finding excuses to touch him, and even calling herself his work wife. I mustered up the courage to approach Alex and ask him what the fuck was going on. But instead of giving me a straight answer, he just laughed it off and said something about me inviting my boyfriend, implying that he was just bringing his girlfriend in return. In that moment, everything clicked into place. Alex must have known about my affair with James all along, that explained his recent coldness and distance, as well as his sudden decision to withdraw all his money from our joint account. I felt a deep sense of guilt and shame for betraying Alex's trust and for letting things spiral out of control. As the awkwardness thickened, I felt tears welling up in my eyes. The party that was supposed to be a celebration had turned into a nightmare. Alex didn't seem to care about the tension he had caused. He walked over to James and greeted him, even extending a handshake. James looked uncomfortable and slightly frightened, sensing the tension in the air. Then in front of everyone, Alex addressed James, saying, You're the boyfriend, aren't you? Hi, I'm the husband. The room fell silent, and I could feel everyone's eyes on me. My in-laws started glaring at me, and I felt like I wanted to disappear. My secret was out, and I was humiliated beyond words. I burst into tears, overwhelmed by the embarrassment and shame of being exposed in such a public manner. As I cried, Alex's smile grew wider. He then turned to the guests and announced that the party was over, apologized for the abrupt end and promised to explain everything later. He ushered everyone out and they left, shooting me accusing glances. I felt the weight of their judgment, knowing they blamed me for the evening's debacle. Even James began to leave, but as he reached the door, Alex called out to him. He told James to say hello to Priscilla. My heart sank as I realized Alex must have informed Priscilla about James's infidelity. Priscilla was James's wife. James looked stunned for a moment before quickly exiting. I was shocked by Alex's move, but my focus was on repairing my shattered marriage. I broke down again in tears, overwhelmed by the mess I had created and desperate to fix things with Alex. The party emptied out, and even the woman Alex arrived with made her exit, but not before planting a quick kiss on his lips. I was horrified watching her kiss my husband right in front of me, complete with a smirk thrown my way. Alex finally turned to me and his smile was icy, detached. He calmly told me that he had known about my infidelity for a long time and that he no longer felt anything for me. He accused me of being ungrateful, highlighting how he had shouldered all responsibilities while I was cheating behind his back. He announced that we were getting a divorce. Desperate, I started begging him to reconsider, but he remained resolute. Despite my pleas and promises to change, Alex remained unmoved. I offered to do anything to make amends. I would give up my phone, cut off all contact with others, quit my job, take on all the household chores, and never leave the house. But Alex stayed silent. His decision was unwavering. Yeah, he explained how he had watched me drift away from him over the months, and now it was too late for me to try to make amends. He reiterated that we were getting a divorce, adding that Priscilla would likely divorce James, and said that I could now be with James without guilt. But I didn't want James. I loved my husband. James was just a temporary escape and a temporary source of pleasure, while Alex was the one I truly loved. Alex's words hit me like a ton of bricks. He told me to call one of my siblings to come back and help me pack my things because he was kicking me out of the house. I begged him not to, but he was resolute. He gave me just 10 minutes to gather my belongings and leave. Alex again repeated that we would be getting a divorce and that the papers would be sent to my parents' house and asked me to sign them when they arrived. I was too overwhelmed with emotion to respond. My marriage, 
The life I had built with Alex was crumbling before my eyes. The weight of it all hit me like a ton of bricks, and I couldn't even stop my tears from flowing. I packed my belongings swiftly, trying not to burden my siblings with having to drive back to pick me up. If only I had known Alex would kick me out, I would have asked them to wait behind after the party. I had tried every means possible, but Alex wasn't listening. He wanted me out. I had to call an Uber to take me to my parents' house. On getting to my parents' house, tears I started crying again. Thankfully, I found solace in their understanding. They had been at the party and knew what had happened, and it was obvious they were very disappointed. Despite this, they comforted me, offered me words of consolation, and told me that Alex might forgive me. My mom even prepared food for me and encouraged me to rest, understanding the turmoil I was going through. I could tell they wanted to hear my side of the story, but they were trying not to add to my stress. As soon as I could gather myself, I recounted everything to my parents. They listened attentively. Their disappointment was so clear. They even tried to talk to Alex, but despite their efforts to intervene and reason with him, he remained resolute, refusing to forgive me and dismissing any attempts at reconciliation. So I guess I'm saying don't cheat, guys. It's just not worth it. On the bright side, I did find out that James was getting a divorce too. Not that I want him. I'm just relieved I'm not the only one facing consequences for my actions. I also discovered that Priscilla actually owned the art gallery, not James. She had just put him in charge. Now that she's found out about his affair with a co-worker, thanks to Alex, she's temporarily closed the gallery. I hope she'll reopen it soon so my former co-workers don't have to find other jobs. Thanks for listening. His friend found my Tinder profile and made a plan with my husband to ruin my life forever. You guys won't believe that my husband's friend found my Tinder profile and went to report me to my husband. I know what's on your mind would be why I had a Tinder profile in the first place while I was married, but that's besides the point. His stupid friend ratted me out and made a plan with my husband that brought about my downfall. This is all because I had snubbed him. What was his business if I had a Tinder profile? Couldn't he have looked the other way? No, he had to go and tell my husband because he's a bitter, lying opportunist. Gah, I have never hated a person so much. Right from the time my husband and I were dating, he had always acted weird with me like he didn't trust my relationship with my husband. What was his problem? It was like he felt threatened by me and didn't like the fact that I had come and stolen his spot from my husband. Yeah, I know I'm still going to explain why I had a Tinder profile. It's a rather complex story, but I'll start from the beginning. I just hope you guys won't hate me. My name is Rachel and I'm 26 years old. My husband's name is Matt and he's 28 years old. I got to know Matt in college four years ago. Yeah, we attended the same college, but different majors though. He majored in environmental design while I majored in film and media production at the Arizona State University, so we learned at the same campus. I was running late for a class, so I bumped into him while on the way. He had been with his friend, Connor, then. I smiled up at him as he bent to pick my things that had scattered on the floor while his friend just started on without offering to help. I hope you're witnessing the evidence of his bad character and attitude. My husband and I started seeing each other all over campus, although I don't know how that was possible, but I had just chalked everything up to fate. We attended parties together and of course with his infamous friend Connor, who still stared at me like I was a leech. Throughout the time when my husband and I were still in the friendship stage, I don't think I ever talked to Connor. At first he scared me, but then I got to find out he was just a nitpicking busybody who was just looking for me to slip up and only got worse after I snubbed him. I recall when we, my husband Connor and I, had gone for a bonfire night hosted by my husband's course colleagues, and my husband had left me to go and get us drinks. We had not started dating by this time still. Connor had been by my side and watched as guys came around to talk with me and have a good laugh. When the guys were gone and I was wondering where my husband had gone, you all wouldn't believe what Connor had said to me back then. He had asked me to blow him in the bushes, that he knew I was just a cheap prostitute that wanted to sink my claws into his friend, and he wasn't going to allow that, so I best suck him off and be on my way. Can you imagine that? I had stared at him and couldn't close my mouth at what he had implied. Then I laid into him. I insulted the life out of the no-good MF because he was delusional to assume I would ever want to blow him off. You guys, since that day, Connor has been watching out for my downfall, and he finally succeeded in achieving it. My husband and I began dating when he was done with college, and I was in my final year of college. We dated for a year, and we married on the anniversary of him asking me to be his girlfriend. 
I got promoted from girlfriend to wife on the same date. We had been married for a year plus some months and we had been just fine. I made it clear to my husband that I didn't like his friends, so he made sure to hang out with him outside the house or when I wasn't around. So I never got to see him, and I was happy for that. Like I said, my marriage with my husband was smooth. We had the most fun. He was a kind and sweet man when he wasn't listening to his friend, that is. I loved my marriage, and I loved my husband. Now as to why I had a Tinder profile. My husband worked and was always providing for me, but then sometime later he stopped. I mean, he was the one that told me to not take on a job and that he was going to provide for me when we had gotten married. So I had stayed as a housewife, but then I got bored staying at home all day while my friends were busy shaking the career world. I didn't complain at first. Who liked to work when their husband was literally catering for all their needs? Definitely not me. Then my husband stopped giving me the weekly upkeep money, and when I had asked him for it, he had asked me why I hadn't worked ever since we got married. I was so shocked because this was the same person that had told me not to work and he would provide everything I wanted. And all of a sudden he was turning it around on me. I just knew this was as a result of his friend's influence. It just had Connor written over it like a stale pie. So I struck out. You couldn't blame me for that. I took my girlfriend's advice and opened a Tinder profile for escort services. I needed quick cash and I was extremely beautiful if you don't mind me bragging. And since my husband has refused to pay for my upkeep, I was going to take matters into my own hands. I had just wanted to get into it and make a little cash on the side and then quit. That was the goal when I built the Tinder profile. Sure, I was married, and so what? Most married people were doing way worse than what I had done. My husband wasn't providing for me because he had decided to listen to that cat of his friend. And what was wrong that I listened to mine? I saw no qualms in that. I built the Tinder profile and didn't put my real picture. I just wanted to test it out and see how it was. Of course, I wasn't scared of my husband finding out because there was no way he would go near one of those online social dating platforms. I was safe. Or so I thought. My first escort date had gone incredibly well and so did the second one and the third. And I had racked up enough cash to see me through an entire month if I was living above my means. I was elated and it showed on my face. My husband noticed and thought I had gotten a new job, lol. I told him I had, but I was still angry with him. This was our first ever big argument since we got married, and I had promised myself I wasn't going to forgive him easily. I mean, if you were in my shoes, would you? And besides, having a Tinder profile was much more beneficial than when he provided for me. I was on top of the world, making money, seeing places, meeting people, going on dates. My husband never suspected a thing, by the way. He was always busy with work. Apparently there was a project. I had heard it on call, he hadn't told me directly. So sometimes he would stay at the office till the next day and only come back to freshen up and didn't even pay me no mind. He was too busy to care if I was alive or dead. Can you imagine that? But I was thriving just fine. And I loved his absence because it gave me freedom to build my profile and ratings on Tinder. My life was amazing, but I didn't know it was coming to hunt me back. Anyway, after three weeks, it seemed my husband had finally noticed that I wasn't too happy with him and he thought of making it right, but obviously wrong timing. On that day, I had a date with a guy I had met through Tinder who I thought was in love with me. Till now, I don't know how I had managed to navigate the whole thing. My husband got back home and said he had made a reservation at a fancy restaurant, and all I just had to do was put on a pretty little dress and follow him. On getting there, it was the same restaurant I and my Tinder date had agreed to meet. The man was already waiting for me, but luckily my husband and I had been seated at the other end of the place, and I could see the man out of the corner of my eyes, but he couldn't see me. Throughout the entire dinner, my heart had been in my throat as to whether the man would spot me and approach my husband, and I that I didn't even pay any mind to what my husband was saying. When my ears perked up to what my husband was saying was when he said something about his friend Connor that it had been Connor that had advised him to stop giving me my weekly upkeep, and then he was stressed about an incoming work project and blah blah blah. I knew Connor's claws had been all over my husband's decision to stop giving me my upkeep money. My husband apologized and said he would resume the upkeep money so that I wouldn't have to work again. Lol, funny of him to think I was going to quit. I mean, I should have quit. He had apologized, but I knew he could be influenced by his friend again, and he would quit giving me money. How would I have been able to keep up with my extravagant lifestyle then? So I didn't quit, 
and I dug a deeper hole for myself. Everything was going perfectly well, you all. My husband didn't know about anything because I was doing a perfect job of hiding it from him so well, until I slipped. I slept with one of the men I had gone on a date with from Tinder. I hadn't meant to, I swear, but I had missed the touch of a man and my husband was too busy with work or hanging out with his friend. So after a successful date, I had gone back with the man to his hotel and I had shared his bed. It was fun at that moment, but I didn't know the guy would use it to blackmail me. Two days later, it seemed like the guy had discovered I was married and sent a postmail to my address. Pictures of me and him in various promiscuous positions had been sent to my mail with a threat to pay him $300,000 or risk being called out. I was horrified because $300,000 was my whole life savings. I hadn't known there had been scammers on the dating platform, but I had just been riffed. I decided to ignore it at first because maybe he was bluffing, but then I had gotten back home from an outing with my girlfriends and found an envelope on my doorstep. My husband could have easily come back home and seen that, so I had to get rid of the blackmail. I withdrew all the money I had in my savings account and all the money I had gotten paid from the men I had gone on dates with and wired it into the account the blackmailer had written out for me. After two weeks of no word from my blackmailer, I could finally breathe fine thinking my problems had finally been over and I could resume going on dates. I was even so bold enough as to put my picture as my header. Bam, another problem came. My husband came back one day with his friend and said he would begin living with us. That's how my husband's friend began living with us. The very man who brought along my downfall with my husband. Apparently, Connor was having accommodation issues, so he had asked to stay with my husband. In fact, my husband had offered so happily because it was his friend, even though I, his wife, had told him I didn't like to be around his friend. It was as if he didn't value my opinions. I didn't like it that I had just been discarded like that, so I decided to keep on going on the Tinder dates. It just meant I was going to have to be more careful with Connor around. I didn't have any money to my name anymore, and the weekly allowance my husband was giving just wasn't cutting it anymore. I sound vain, but that was just how I was. I probably still am because my husband didn't have to go so far as ruining my life because of an ordinary Tinder profile. Anyway, I didn't know all these things would come back to bite me in the butt. I was extremely careful when it came to going out on dates. It was always in the mornings when I was sure my husband and his friend would have gone to work. The men always questioned it, but of course they didn't know it was because I was married. The only time I agreed to night outings was when I was sure my husband had traveled on a business trip and I could easily sneak past his friend. I was navigating that area well. I didn't even speak with the guy when we somehow managed to cross paths in the house, but I didn't know his anger towards me was brimming up every time and his sentiments towards me hadn't changed. He still thought I was a boy asterisk gray. And he made it known one fateful day when my husband was on one of his usual business trips. He told me he didn't know why his friend had married me in the first place since I was only just after his money. Apparently he had warned my husband against marrying me, but it seemed I had put some love potion in his friend's body and he was going to root me out for what I am. I laughed that day and had given him a piece of my mind too. Like how dare he scrutinize me like that? He was right of course, but he had no right to throw it in my face, LOL. I became more wary of him that day, but did I quit going on Tinder dates? No, until I was caught. I didn't think anyone was going to be at home, so I had allowed my date to bring me back to the house when, lo and behold, Connor was in my face with my date holding the small of my back. I was tongue-tied like a deer caught in between the headlights. I quickly removed my date's hand from my waist and went on to explain that he was a business partner. A business partner when I had no business in the works. I didn't even know when the lie had let out of my mouth. Well, in my mind, Connor didn't need to know that but he had quirked his eyebrows and said nothing. For a whole two weeks, I hadn't gone anywhere or risk being seen with anyone because Connor was prying too much for his own good. He was still suspicious of the fact that I had a business partner, and the dad mentioned it in front of my husband when he had come back from his trip and we were having dinner together. He had just popped the question out of nowhere. What business was I doing? Well, I couldn't very well confess in front of my husband because I was already in too deep. So I had lied that I was looking into going into cosmetics and it was still in the works. That seemed to have pleased my husband a lot. I really didn't know what had changed his mind towards me working. He hadn't been like that when we had first gotten married. I didn't understand what had changed his mind or who had changed his mind. 
Connor finally moved out. You all don't know how I thanked the gods for that miracle. But then it was as if I saw him everywhere. One particular time I was leaving for a date, he showed up to the house and said he wanted to see my husband and asked me where I was all dressed up and going to. I had told him to mind his business and had pushed past him. I had been so reckless and I still blame myself to this very moment of writing this. If I hadn't cut him off so quick and checked my surroundings to see if I was being followed, I wouldn't have been in the mess I found myself in. Connor had followed me. That was when he had also found my Tinder profile. I know because he had confronted me about it before he had told my husband. He had thrown the evidence of me frolicking around with another man when I was married in my face. Apparently, Connor had taken pictures of me smiling and flirting with my date. He said he knew I was a butch asterisk re and was glad I was finally showing my true colors. I begged him that night like I had never begged anyone before. I promised him I would delete the profile and everything that he didn't have to report it to my husband. I had Eve said I would anything to that disgusting slime, but it seemed he was a much loyal friend than I had thought. Then he brought out pictures that the blackmailer had sent to me like two months ago. Apparently he had known for a while now and just wanted to catch me in the act and I had fallen right into his trap, you guys. I had fallen directly into the trap he had laid out for me. Connor didn't waste any time in informing my husband, and of course, my husband believed him almost immediately. That man would believe anything coming from his friend in a heartbeat. However, the only thing he did when he got to know was throw me out of his house angrily. My husband was furious, actually, that after everything he had given me, and after everything he had done for me, I chose to repay him by thrusting myself into the arms of other men and accepting dates on Tinder. I apologized and told him that I hadn't known what had come over me, but my husband wasn't hearing that one bit. I had left his house and planned to go back to apologize once everything had calmed down. I thought as long as my husband hadn't sent divorced papers yet, things could be forgiven. I didn't know those two. My husband and I were planning a revenge against me. A revenge that ruined me. I had bravely gone back to the house after a week because I wanted my husband to forgive me so badly. But as I stepped into the house and I saw Connor with him, I knew something bad was about to come out of this. My husband had said he was going to forgive me, but he wanted to know what I found in those Tinder dates. I told him I didn't know what I had seen in them the first place that I had probably done it for the thrill. Connor had the gall to laugh at that moment. Can you imagine the idiot that had put me in this mess laughing at my groveling? Okay, okay, maybe I was the idiot that had put myself in the mess, but he had no right to laugh at me. Anyway, my husband told me he needed to see me on one of those Tinder dates and I should have seen that as a red stop light sign. But I wanted to please my husband, so I agreed. I opened up my Tinder account. I still cringe to this very day every time I remember what I put as my header. Hot and yummy and ready to escort you to only the right places. Almost immediately, there was a request for a date. I hadn't known this was all a part of their plan. I met up with the man that evening, knowing my husband was close by at the restaurant, watching me smile and flirt, and enjoy fine dining with another man. Everything was going well until all of a sudden my husband's friend walks up to me and points at me and screams to the whole restaurant that I was a married woman and was entertaining dates from other guys. That how could I do such a thing? My jaw dropped to the floor at that statement and I was embarrassed to my bones because they had been the ones that had wanted me to go on the date. The stares I had gotten from the crowd at the restaurant was palpable and I covered my head in shame and left there but apparently my husband and his friend weren't done with me and proceeded to tell all my friends that I had gonorrhea and that they should stay away from me because I had gotten it from another man. It just implied the fact that I had cheated on my husband and he was letting them know. I was confused when I started getting messages of a speedy recovery and what had propelled me to cheat. Then I called one of my friends and she told me her husband had texted them and that she couldn't be friends with me anymore because her husband didn't like the fact of her being friends with a cheater. That had been the replies of almost all my friends that night, and I had to run back to my husband and ask him why he was doing this to me. However, I didn't make it to the house because the police apprehended me in the middle of the road. Apparently, they had been looking for a drug baron who sold drugs in the dark streets of Arizona, and I had been last seen with him. So they didn't know whether to think I was his customer or if I knew anything about him, but I had to follow them to the station first. They found drugs in my bag, my Tinder date had put drugs in my bag and tried to frame me. I told them I had no involvement in it and had only met the guy on Tinder. 
I even showed them the app and my chats with the man. I had to release myself on bail with the last of my savings making me well and truly broke and friendless and husbandless. My husband sent me divorce papers by the time I had bailed myself out of the station. But it had all been my husband and his friends doing to teach me a lesson. They had set me up with the man and had him implant the drugs to give me a little scare. And it did more than give me a little scare. I was associated with a drug dealer and had possession of drugs on my criminal sheet. I had no money and my life was ruined. My friends thought I had an STD and didn't want to associate with me anymore, so I moved away. I learned my lesson the hard way, 